Today I'm going to be reviewing an affordable drawing tablet. So if you've been tempted to try out some digital art or some minor editing on your own artwork, you are going to be interested in this review. This tablet was sent to me by Simbin so that I could do a review for you guys. It runs about $200 on Amazon, and just for transparency, they did provide this to me for the review. All of the opinions in this review are my own, though. $200 for a tablet that comes with a drawing pen for digital painting, that is really, really, I don't want to say inexpensive, because anytime you get into tech, it's... I guess that's an, a relative term, but it is one of the more affordable tablets available to you. So Simmons says that their target for this product are students or those who are beginners at digital art. So it's obviously not going to be for everybody. I'm a bit of an Android slash, I guess, Samsung fangirl. Those are the products that I'm used to working with. And there is a bit of a difference quality wise and even app wise what comes loaded on this product versus those. So it's not that it's going to be the same, but I was impressed that it still worked a lot better than I was expecting considering that price difference because there is a big price difference between this and the ones that I've used before. I've also, I have my 27 inch Wacom tablet. 27? I don't know. I'm bad at numbers. So those are what I'm used to drawing on. The first day that I got this, I charged it and I started drawing and I realized, you know what? This is a little bit, the it's not calibrated that well. And I never did find a way that I could calibrate the pen. It's just a hair off, which I'm not used to, but I quickly adjusted for it. So it really didn't end up being a problem for me, but I started out by thinking, let's see how accurate this is. I'm gonna import one of my reference photos and trace it. So I traced over it and I could not, I mean, it was the easiest way for me to tell how accurate that pen was. And it was a little bit off, not bad. And by the end of the tracing, it's like my brain and hand started working together and just corrected for the slight amount that that was not calibrated. And the funny thing is that when I started, I, I was thinking, oh, I'm just gonna doodle tonight. I'm not gonna start a full project. I was working on another project at the time I started doodling on it and when I did the tracing of the tiger I was thinking okay I just wanted to see how well this would work no I was having so much fun drawing on this thing that I ended up finishing the whole tiger you can't blame me it is fun to draw digi digitally if you've never done it before now here's the cool thing if you haven't drawn digitally before there is not a very big learning curve for that it's very similar to traditional media the way that you layer the way that you blend and you're gonna have to learn the app that you're using whichever one you use this one comes with the free version version of Autodesk Ske Sketchbook Mobile, I believe it is. That I'm used to saying Sketchbook Pro. That's what it used to be called when I used to use it. I actually didn't use that on this one. I decided to use, I tested both, but for my actual project, I ended up using an app called ArtRage. It's about $5, I want to say, in the Play Store, the Google Play Store. And that one, the reason that I went with that one is you're able to do some blending and things that you can't do, or at least last time I used it, you couldn't do with Autodesk Sketchbook. So I did try both apps and I didn't notice any difference as far as lagginess or anything like that. Now this one is a bit laggy in comparison to some of the higher end tablets but it, it really wasn't as distracting I thought that would be distracting I thought I would have a hard time because I'm so used to my Samsung's it wasn't I actually did not have once I got started with this I quickly adjusted and it, I, I was just enjoying myself drawing but again if you're new to digital drawing once you start figuring out how the layering works how that app works it's very very similar to how you've drawn before I, it took me when I first started digital painting by my fourth painting my first couple were hilariously bad but by my fourth I may still have photos yep I have photos. You can see the first, second, third, fourth, as I continued to move on, they got better and better. Once you get the hang of that, you can do artwork. I was selling right after that, my fourth painting, I started selling portraits, digital portraits to some of my clients because I could do them so quickly. I would send them the digital file and then they could make prints of whatever that work was. So it was a way for me to offer lower cost portraits than my traditional media. Now, do be aware, a lot of these apps are going to limit how large you can go on for printing. So don't think you're going to be printing big poster sizes off of something like this. That is probably not going to work out. But for smaller printings, pr printing on a coffee mug, stickers, anything like that, this is really nice. The screen resolution on this isn't amazing. It's 1280 by 800. It's about half what my phone is. So it is low and I thought that would bug me too. It really wasn't bad once I started drawing on it. When I looked at my phone versus this side by side, it was noticeable. But once I really started working on it, I didn't have any problems. As far as the apps and such go, I installed some of my 
my wallpapers that I've used before, my live wallpapers, there was enough lag on this, it, it really couldn't handle it well, it looked terrible. So I ended up removing that and just putting a static image, which looked nice. For the apps, this thing is bare bones. That was new to me. I've actually never had an Android device that didn't have, you know, well, Samsung overlaying or originally Motorola, my first Android phone overlaying their, their UI. So this one does not have a lot of apps. It doesn't have a lot of anything on it. It actually doesn't even have a photo gallery, but which was kind of weird to me, but you can do download those from the place or they have free version paid version whatever you know whatever you're looking for there but it is definitely bare bones when it comes to the apps so of course it has YouTube and, and your standard Google apps there but yeah I thought that was kind of funny I'm like where's the photo gallery I'm so I didn't realize that was like based on that has nothing to do with this review let's move on for the pen, it has 1,024 levels of pressure, so it is pressure sensitive. You, The harder you push, you're going to get different results, and it'll depend on the app you're using. Some apps, when you push harder, you get a thicker line. Some apps, when you push harder, you get a, a darker line. So it just depends on what you have set up. Some of them, it just depends. You can change your preferences within the app for what results you're going to get there. But it is, it worked well. The pressure sensitivity, I was very happy with. And that pen it takes a... A-A-A-A, four A's. I didn't even know they made that battery. So I would recommend probably picking up extra. If you're gonna get this, I would probably go ahead and get yourself another pack of those because I'm not sure how long those batteries last. Of course, it lasted throughout what I was testing on this, but I only used it for a couple of days. So I'm really not sure how often you would go through those. This does feature palm rejection. So when the pen is close to the tablet, it's not, your hand won't theoretically rub on the screen or it won't affect it. It didn't work much, but then again, to be fair, neither does palm, palm rejection doesn't work that great on Wacom tablets either. And those are like, you know, not cheap. So that is, just seems to be a problem with a lot of the tech. The palm rejection is kind of hit or miss. Sometimes it worked and sometimes I was frustrated or getting frustrated with my hand. So another thing, if you're going to get this, I would recommend picking up is one of those little gloves that goes over the back end of, you know, your pinky and covers the side of your hand. Once I put that on, that's what I use for my Wacom tablet. Once I put that on, I had no problems with the side of my hand affecting my drawing. But before I did that, I was having problems. I, I didn't notice the palm rejection being super, it would sometimes work and sometimes not even when the pen was touching it would sometimes my palm would affect it so while it does have that feature just like Wacom I, I wasn't super impressed with how well it, that feature worked and just to go over the specs really quick this one is running Android Nugget it had Nougat Nugget I don't know how to say that it has a 10.1 touchscreen 32 gigs of internal storage you can also add up to a 32 gig micro SD card so that is nice you can add storage space on there which I always love in any of my my tablets or phones. It has a two meg camera on front, five meg on the back. The camera, not amazing, but I I don't try I don't know if you've ever tried taking photos with a tablet. It is the most awkward ridiculous thing like I will always grab my phone first so the camera is not something one way or another that for me would make a difference because I wouldn't use it on I don't care how good the tablet is it's not a feature that I've ever found myself wanting to use it's it's awkward now the screen with the pen that was something I really liked too it was very comfortable the pen wrote on it I didn't feel I read a reviews talking about it felt scratchy I didn't notice that I don't know if that's something that's been improved or what but I felt very comfortable drawing on the screen I never felt like I was damaging the screen in any way it was just comfortable to ride on so that I was really happy with now for the case this case is one that I definitely don't know how long it'll last it feels a little bit on the flimsy side but it came free so I'm definitely not going to complain about that most devices do not come with I have chicken feathers stuck or like chicken dust stuck on the inside of this yeah chicken was helping me draw so let's go ahead and take a look at how this performed and the project that I was able to draw with it after I did the test where I traced this out just to see how accurate the pen was, I just realized I was having fun. And so instead of doodling like I initially planned on doing, I went ahead and started shading everything in. Now you can see this isn't completely inside the line going back to that pen's just a little bit off. And so I had to get used to that and just sort of correct how I was using the pen to stay within the lines where I wanted it to be. Just like using a paintbrush, you will adjust for where you want that to go when you place that on the, the in this case, I would say paper, but the screen. And you're gonna layer this very, very much like you would with traditional media. In this case, I'm working from the back and working my way forward. 
Now, I did record this, and so you would think that would cause a lot of, of problems with lag. That really didn't make any difference. I tested it while recording, tested without recording. I didn't notice any difference. There you can see I'm playing around with a lot of different types of brushes. This is a newer program for me, so I hadn't figured out exactly the type of brush that I wanted to use for what I wanted to do here. A lot of what I'm going to do for my underpainting is just using the airbrush tool. That gives me a really nice soft feel around the edges where I don't want them to be super crisp. And I'm just going to fill that in. I don't care at all if the color is exact. If none of that really matters. You're going to layer on top of this. Again, just like I said, like any traditional media. So I'm starting with this darker gray color so that I can put the white highlights on top of that. And what you'll start with, this is one of the problems that a lot of people who are newer to digital art will run into, is that everything feels fuzzy. Everything, your lines aren't crisp. And that isn't that you're necessarily doing anything wrong. Usually that comes from you're not finishing your work. You're calling it finished before you go back and clean things up. Now the lines that you're seeing there, those outlines that I initially traced from that first drawing, those I will end up removing completely. And just blocking in where my general lights and darks are going to be. Something you guys often hear me say when I'm oil or acrylic painting, colored pencil, it, it really is very, very similar. If you can use one art medium, what you know from one medium will trans late into the next so it's not like you're starting from scratch you do have to get a feel for the app that you're using but it's very very quick that you should pick that up and again I don't have to worry at this stage about my outer edges being perfectly clean I'm gonna go on top of all of this and clean stuff up later now see the little color tool thing that I'm using at the bottom color tool thing technical term there but see how I'm able to adjust that and move that as I'm picking my color this is one of the things that I love about digital art that I think translates well or really teaches you a lot about color it makes it very easy to see the color that you want and tell based on that little corner thing how is it more gray is it a real highly saturated color it will teach you a lot about color and blending and mixing, figuring out what color you want for any given thing. I love that about digital painting. And no matter which app or which program that you use for digital painting, you're going to have something very similar where you can see with the eyedropper tool, you can see what color you're using. Like here, this cream color, it's a grayish cream. I'm not super far to the one edge or the other, so it's not too gray. It's kind of in the middle, not super gray, not super saturated. And it really does help you to understand color a little bit better. When you see that on a color wheel of sorts, where that color you're mixing, what that lines up with. You're not really worried about direction or anything like that, just filling everything in solid here. I'm just going to continue through blocking in my general shapes and shadows, my lights and my darks. I'm going to come on top of this with the detail. So right now it's, it feels very blocky. That's totally normal. Once I get that blocked in, I can go ahead and start fussing over the smaller details, which for me is always the fun part. One of the things that's really nice about digital painting is an undo button. Being able to undo quickly and easily anything, if you make a brush stroke and realize, oh, don't like that, you can quickly adjust it. And depending on the program you have or you're using, you're going to have certain blending tools you want to play with, a lot of different brushes. So here on this program, Art Rage, that one, you can see the, the brush tools that I have available to me there on the left. But in addition to that, I can adjust how well things blend. I can adjust so much from each of those tools in the settings. It's a really fun app to play with. So I stuck a darker background just to get an idea to make sure my edges, I was getting the fur going over it. When I was up against the white, I couldn't tell if my fur marks were really going over that dark background or if they were showing up where I wanted. So I needed to fill something solid back there. And now I can move on. And I just added another layer. You can add layer on top of layer. Now certain apps, I know the free version that comes with Sketchbook Mobile, that one limits you to three or four layers. If you pay them, they'll give you more layers. With this one, I don't think I have a limit or I'm, I've not reached the limit anyway with ArtRage. And you see how I can get these nice, soft, wispy lines for the hair there. 
And that most, like I said, most of what I'm doing here is going to be with the airbrush tool. Where I want more crisp lines, I can switch over to, I've got that mechanical pencil tool or some of the other ones, a paintbrush in there if I want a more harsh line. But I really like the airbrush tool and you can adjust how opaque you want each of your brush strokes to be. And because the pen on this tablet is pressure sensitive, depending on how hard I push, it would affect how dark that line was. So if I wanted it to be really translucent, really small, where I get that sort of dagger brush stroke, it's just how I'm, how much pressure I'm adding to the pen. Really, really nice to work with. So it feels more like if you were working with a pencil or a paintbrush, the amount of pressure that you're adding would affect that type of brush stroke. And that's the same here when you're using a pen like this that is pressure sensitive. Layering more of the hair. And you can add as much detail, as little detail. I mean, you're not limited to how realistic you want to go. When you're painting digitally, this one has a more stylized feel. I'm not going super realistic, but you can. You can absolutely make it look like a photograph. Or you can paint with, especially with this app, you can get a lot of very stylized type of brush strokes. So if you wanted something that looked more impressionistic, you can definitely do that. You're there, There's just so much potential on the type of art that you're creating when you are painting digitally. And the nice thing is, it's not as scary as, let's say, grabbing a new canvas. You're new to painting, grabbing a canvas. You're afraid to mess up because you don't want to waste supplies. When you're painting with, which you shouldn't be afraid of doing, by the way, but that is a normal feeling. When you're painting digitally, you're not as likely to have that feeling because you're not wasting, you know, if, if you do a painting and you absolutely hate it, you don't feel like you wasted anything. You're not going through supplies. So you've got that initial investment on the tablet, but the supplies themselves don't run out. Well, you know, besides batteries. We can just, you, look how much of this is very similar to how I paint with the way that I'm layering here and building up these shadows and then going on top for my details. And these little hairs, as I was doing those, because I draw them on really quickly. That's where I really noticed lag on the tablet, where I would draw the hair and a, a second later, the hair would actually show up. But I go through so quickly, that it wasn't a real problem. When I, first, I made a couple of, of strokes just testing that, and it was a, at first I was thinking, ooh, I'm not gonna be able to work on this. But I was surprised at how quickly you you just don't, you stop noticing it. You just keep working and assume the, the line is going to show up a second later where you wanted it, and move on to your next line. So I wasn't having to make a line, wait for it to show up, and then move, you know, pause and then move on. I just made the brush stroke and assumed it would show up where I wanted it to. Getting more shadows in here. And the really great thing, one of my favorite things about painting digitally, if I have a layer and I, I put a layer on top of that and I realize that first layer, I really wish I had gone a little bit darker or lighter, I can go and make adjustments on the layer underneath and it doesn't affect the top layers. So you you have more a little bit more control versus traditional media and then I can go back and adjust just one of the other layers without affecting the ones on top, those final layers. You can put in tons and tons of detail with the brush strokes here for the fur if you want it or leave it a little bit more loose like I've done here. This, if you have never painted digitally, no matter what type of tablet, if you've already got one at home, try it. It is fun. It is so such an enjoyable process. Like I said here, I wasn't even planning on completing a project here. And I thought for this review, I would just do something quick, a little doodle, no big deal. And the night that I started this, I wasn't even planning on doing anything more than a, a doodle, not even for the main project. I just wanted to see how accurate the pen was and that sort of thing. But I started having so much fun drawing that I just had to go ahead and finish it. And you can see the adjustments coming up. I have that little tab that keeps popping up. There are just so many ways that you can adjust your brushes within all of these art, art programs. So here, see how I'm going to paint my background? And I can go right behind the tiger because I moved that background layer behind the tiger. So I'm going to get some nice brush strokes. And this was a fun one. I'd not used this brush stroke on this app. I don't have a whole lot of experience with this specific app. But this one, I'd never tried that. And all of these brush strokes, it acted, it was blending like wet into wet oil paint would with a palette knife. One brush stroke, one I would switch colors and they would smudge into the next. That was fun. And if you do a background like this, 
I can completely change it. Let's say I decide, you know what? I don't like this. Let's try another background. I can save this background, make it so that it's no longer visible, and try another background. You can try multiple backgrounds. This is really nice if you get into this sort of thing when you're doing pet portraits because you can try different backgrounds and show your client what that would look like. Same as Photoshop. Any type of photo editor, you can make those adjustments, show your client, and let them decide if that's a look that they want. Did you like it in purple? Did you want a red background or a black background? Let them see what it looks like before you paint it tradi in traditional media so that r that can save you some headaches later on if you paint something if they are certain they want red and you paint it up against their pet and realize after the fact or they realize after the fact wow I don't like red at all in this. It doesn't look good. If you do that digitally first or in Photoshop first or whatever app you want to use first, it can just prevent a lot of problems later on for those clients. So even if you're not necessarily interested in completing digital artwork, it's still a really handy tool to use in showing your clients what type of background changes you could make or making those sorts of alterations because that pen makes everything much, much easier than making those alterations with, let's say you're doing it on the computer with a mouse. So if you are new to digital drawing, if you just want to kind of get your feet wet, see if that's something you're remotely interested in, this may be a good tablet for you. You can also use it to take a photo. Let's say you're working on something and you decide, like the octopus, I actually did this on when I was drawing that one, if you remember. I wondered, I wonder if, if fireflies would look cool on this. And I was pretty sure. I thought it was going to look good. I took a photo and then used my digital tablet, not this one, this is before I got this one, but I mean, I, I digitally painted in the fireflies to see if that was going to look good before I did it on my painting. And the that way I didn't end up ruining my painting. I guess I wouldn't ruin it, but I didn't like it as much. I found out, and this is something that you could do that with. Even if you don't want to get into digital painting, if you have any type of drawing tablet, try drawing on it and seeing on your artwork when you decide, hey, I wonder if a blue outline on the shadowed area here would look good. Try that digitally first before you do it on your, your traditional media, your canvas, and that will save you some headaches. And sometimes it makes you feel fr more free to try things you wouldn't otherwise try because you're afraid it might not look good. So that is something that I love about digital art, even if you don't want to get into actual digital painting. The things that you can do to try things out on your work, just taking a photo of it and try that out before you hit the canvas can save you a lot of headaches. Now, I've already had some people ask if this is a tablet I would personally buy. It wouldn't make sense for me because I've already got the Wacom tablet. I'm actually going to be buying another Samsung. I'm I'm so I'm such an Android fan girl. Like it, it's bad, and I like tech stuff a lot. So for me, it doesn't make sense because I already have some of these other tablets. So this is not a, the it it doesn't run as smoothly as those do. But if you don't already have those things, you're just wanting to test it out, see if that's something you're interested in, you're new at digital painting, or you thought it, lo it looks like fun, then this may be a really, really good choice for you. I mean, the fact that I finished that tiger, I didn't expect to. I thought I was going to do a quick little doodle and there's my test and I'll make my video. I was having fun. I genuinely had fun drawing on this. So that I think says something. That something might be that I'm obsessed with tigers though. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week, although YouTube's been terrible about notifying people. So in addition to that, you may want to click the bell icon. That may or may not work with YouTube lately. Your other option, I've got an email list. There's also a button where you can click on that. If you sign up for my email list, I send out a weekly newsletter that lets you know what videos I had go live that week and lots of art tips and motivation.